Welcome to Review Central's English Proficiency Reviewer Drills. This is Episode 3, featuring drill questions on vocabulary. English language proficiency is a typical subtest in many exams including most high school and college admission and scholarship qualifying tests, some professional licensure and certification exams, and even some employment pre-qualifiers. English language proficiency is also a must to pass international language proficiency certification exams such as the TOEFL and the IELTS. If you are eyeing or are set to take any of these tests, then this reviewer is intended for you. There are 50 questions featured on this reviewer. All questions are modeled on actual questions that appeared on various English proficiency subtests. Take note that English vocabulary may include word meanings, synonyms, antonyms, idiomatic expressions, related and similar words, loan words and phrases, and so on. You will find a good sampling of all of these on this drill. Before we proceed, don't forget to subscribe to Review Central and click or press the bell button to make sure you get notified whenever we post a new reviewer or other review materials on this channel. Let's begin. Drill question number one. Choose the word or phrase that best keeps the meaning of the original sentence if it is substituted for the underlined word or phrase. Before the introduction of computers, recording data and writing works of fiction had been grueling tasks. A. Punishing B. Impossible C. Mind-bending D. Rejuvenating E. Gruesome The correct answer is A. Punishing Having no computer and doing the tasks mentioned manually must have been very challenging but not impossible, so we can eliminate answer choice B. It is definitely not rejuvenating either, so we can also eliminate answer choice D. Mind-bending is usually used to describe something that is amazing, fascinating, or unbelievable so it also doesn't fit the meaning of the underlined word. Gruesome means horrific. Although the challenges of having to work without computers may seem too much and unimaginable, especially to people who have not known how it was to work without computers, describing it as gruesome is simply inappropriate and grossly exaggerated. Among the choices, only punishing best replaces the word grueling. Drill question number two. Choose the word that best completes the sentence. Even though there were two outs, Manuel stepped up to the plate, blank. A. Jokingly. B. Unwaveringly. C. Absent-mindedly. D. Indignantly. E. Angrily. The correct answer is B. Unwaveringly. In baseball or softball, stepping up to the plate, to bat, when your team already has two outs is a very nerve-wracking and pressure-filled experience. Therefore, you step up to the plate neither jokingly nor absent-mindedly in such a scenario. There is nothing in the sentence that suggests that Manuel should be angry or indignant so these are inappropriate demeanors in the given scenario. Unwavering is synonymous with firm, steadfast, steady, unfaltering, unshakable, resolute. Therefore, the completed sentence should read as Even though there were two outs, Manuel stepped up to the plate unwaveringly. Drill question number three. Select the word or words that best capture the meaning of the underlined word. As a result of inbreeding, some members of the Russian imperial household suffered from hemophilia. A. Bloodthirstiness. B. Infertility. C. Uncontrollable bleeding. D. Mental disorders. E. Sex addiction. The correct answer is C. Uncontrollable bleeding. Hemophilia is usually an inherited bleeding disorder in which the blood does not clot properly. This can lead to spontaneous bleeding as well as excessive bleeding following injuries or surgery. Hemophilia is known to have affected many royal families because of their practice of inbreeding, earning it the moniker, a royal disease. Queen Victoria of England, who ruled from 1837 to 1901, is the most prominent, and possibly the first royal to have suffered from hemophilia. She passed the trait on to three of her nine children. Her son Leopold dies of a hemorrhage after a fall when he was 30. It is also believed that the hemophilia gene was passed from Queen Victoria to the ruling families of Russia, Spain, and Germany. Drill question number 4. Dog is to puppy, in the same manner that. 
A. Duck is to swan B. Horse is to foal C. Rooster is to hen D. Calf is to calves E. Kitten is to cat The correct answer is B. A puppy is a young dog. Therefore the relationship of the two words is that the second word denotes the name given to the young of the first word. This is the relationship that we should be looking for in the options given. Option B is the correct answer because a foal is a young horse in the same way that a puppy is a young dog. Oh by the way, contrary to popular opinion, a young horse is not called a pony. A pony is a type of small horse. A young pony is also called a foal. Kitten is a young cat. This would have satisfied the relationship we are looking for except that the order is reversed. It should have been cat is to kitten, to match with dog is to puppy. Duck and swan are two different animals. Therefore, option A does not fit the relationship we are looking for. By the way, a young swan is called a cygnet and a young duck is, of course, a duckling. A rooster and a hen are a male and a female chicken, respectively. Option C likewise does not fit the relationship we are looking for. Calves is the plural of calf. Also not the relationship we are looking for. And yes, the young of several animals including whales, elephants, reindeers, and hippopotamuses are called calves. Drill question number 5. Select the answer that best conveys the meaning of the underlined phrase. Break a leg, Brenda shouted as her daughter got ready to take the stage for her final scene. The underlined phrase is, break a leg. A. Break someone's leg. B. Do well. C. Do a lousy job. D. Pick a fight. E. Be careful. The correct answer is B. Do well. Break a leg is an English idiomatic expression, and one which is probably deliberately figurative. Break a leg, originally used as an ironic way of wishing good luck in a performance or presentation, may have arisen from the belief that one ought not to utter the words good luck to an actor. By wishing someone bad luck, it is supposed that the opposite will occur. It is said that the term was first used in the late 1800s when an actor jumped on stage and actually broke his leg in the process. Drill question number 6. Choose the word which is the most opposite in meaning to the underlined word. A position of considerable influence. The underlined word is, considerable. A. Paltry. B. Sizable. C. Significant. D. Indecisive. E. Major. The correct answer is A. Paltry. Considerable means notably large in size, amount, or extent. Sizable, significant, and major are all synonymous or similar in meaning with considerable so they can be eliminated. Indecisive is not related to the meaning of considerable at all, and it also does not fit the context of the sentence. Paltry means small or meager so it is directly the opposite of considerable. Drill question number 7. Choose the word closest in meaning to the underlined word. With that cherubic face of hers, who would suspect that she is capable of mischief? The underlined word is, cherubic. A. Tiny. B. Pretty. C. Innocent. D. Diabolic. E. Chubby. The correct answer is C. Innocent. Among the answer choices, only diabolic is not synonymous or similar in meaning with cherubic so we can immediately eliminate it. Tiny, pretty, innocent, and chubby are all similar or related in meaning to cherubic, but only innocent fits the context of the given sentence. Drill question number 8. Select the word or words that best capture the meaning of the underlined word. The newscaster committed a serious faux pas when she described the battle-weary soldiers as trigger-happy cowboys in uniform. The underlined words are, faux pas. A. Sin. B. Misstep. C. Offense. D. Insult. E. Error. The correct answer is B. Misstep. Faux pas is a loan phrase from French that's been used in English since the 17th century. The two words that constitute the phrase are faux, which means false, and pas, which means dance step. 
Over time, faux has also acquired the meaning fake, which is the sense we're familiar with from the phrase faux fur, faux pearl, faux leather, and so on. But in faux pas, it means false, and the whole phrase means false step, or misstep. Drill question number 9. Choose the word that best completes the sentence. The old horse, blank, slowly across the field. A. Swam. B. Plunged. C. Crawled. D. Lumbered. E. Slithered. The correct answer is D. Lumbered. The missing word appears to be a verb that denotes motion. One plunges into water or something deep, not across a field. Therefore, we can eliminate answer choice B. A horse does not crawl, and although it can, it doesn't normally swim. To slither means to move smoothly over a surface with a twisting or oscillating motion. Slithering motion is usually associated with snakes, not horses. We are left with lumbered. Lumber means to move in a slow, heavy, awkward way. The horse in our given sentence is probably very old and already have difficulty walking. The correctly completed sentence should read as The old horse lumbered slowly across the field. Drill question number 10. Choose the letter that corresponds to the word or phrase that means almost the same as the underlined word. The professor reminded her students that plagiarism carries severe penalties, including possible expulsion. The underlined word is plagiarism. A. Academic mischief. B. Academic fraud. C. Intellectual dishonesty. D. Immoral conduct. E. Destruction of school property. The correct answer is B. Academic fraud. Academic mischief and academic fraud are misconducts that happen within academic settings, that is, inside schools such as in colleges and universities. Academic mischiefs are general violated behaviors such as cheating, destroying school property, unruly behavior, and the like. Academic frauds are more specific and usually more serious misconducts committed usually by students, but in some cases also by teachers and other school personnel. Although plagiarism also happens outside the academe, it is by far the most common manifestation of academic fraud. Plagiarism is presenting work or ideas from another source as your own, with or without consent of the original author, by incorporating it into your work without full acknowledgement. Some writers and commentators at times refer to plagiarism as a form of intellectual dishonesty but that is not accurate, as the two are distinct and unrelated. Intellectual dishonesty is committed when one advocates a position using arguments or data already known or established to be fallacious. Drill question number 11. Choose the word that best completes the sentence. Noel was so, blank, that he wouldn't join in any of the games at the fair. A. Lazy. B. Sullen. C. Stayed. D. Competitive. E. Energetic. The correct answer is B. Sullen. Energetic and competitive are the opposite of the context of the given sentence so we can immediately eliminate them. Stayed, meaning respectable or unadventurous, and lazy are possible answers, but sullen is better suited to complete the sentence. Sullen means bad-tempered, sulky, gloomy, or in a depressed mood. The correctly completed sentence should read as. Noel was so sullen that he wouldn't join in any of the games at the fair. Drill question number 12. Choose the word closest in meaning to the underlined word. To animate characters. The underlined word is, animate. A. Cartoonize. B. Develop. C. Entertain. D. Enliven. E. Isolate. The correct answer is D, enliven. Although cartoons is the popular term for animated films and TV shows, to cartoonize is not synonymous with to animate. To cartoonize means to make something, usually a photograph or an image, appear like a cartoon, that is, one-dimensional, brightly colored, and exaggerated. Cartoonize is a popular filter in many photo and video editing software tools. To animate, on the other hand, means to give the appearance of movement, such as in cartoon or animation films or TV shows. Our given phrase obviously refers to the latter. 
To animate characters can only be interpreted to mean to make characters move like in cartoon or animation films. Drill question number 13. Choose the letter that corresponds to the word or phrase that means almost the same as the underlined word. Doctors quarantine the COVID positive patients. The underlined word is quarantine. A. Separated. B. Cured. C. Detained. D. Disinfected. E. Vaccinated. The correct answer is A. Separated. To quarantine people is to put them in a state, period, and or place of isolation in order to prevent the spread of an infectious disease. That is, they are separated from the rest of the population. Quarantined individuals may or may not be subjected to disinfection, vaccination, or cure. In certain severe and grave cases, detention can be used as a form of quarantine. Drill question number 14. Choose the word which is the most opposite in meaning to the underlined word. An adroit flick of his right food settled the issue. The underlined word is, adroit. A. Expert. B. Adept. C. Clumsy. D. Tentative. E. Skillful. The correct answer is C. Clumsy. Expert, adept, and skillful all have similar or related meaning to adroit. Between tentative and clumsy, the latter is the one with most opposite meaning to the underlined word. Drill question number 15. Tina got all her Christmas shopping done in one fell swoop. To do something in one fell swoop is to A. Do it slowly and deliberately. B. Do it tentatively. C. Do it in your imagination. D. Do it deliberately. E. Do it suddenly in a single, swift action. The correct answer is E. Do it suddenly in a single, swift action. To do something in one fell swoop is to do it suddenly or in a single, swift action. Fell here is an adjective meaning fierce, savage, cruel, or ruthless. This sense of fell is otherwise archaic, preserved mainly in this idiom. Found in Macbeth, we can thank Shakespeare for this expression. Drill question number 16. Choose the word or phrase closest in meaning to the underlined word. Samantha was wont to arise at 5 o'clock every morning. The underlined word is, want. A. Would not. B. Accustomed. C. Unwilling. D. Grudgingly. E. Forced. The correct answer is B. Accustomed. Want, without the apostrophe, is not a commonly used word in everyday spoken and written English, but it often finds its way into vocabulary tests and quizzes. As is expected, want, without apostrophe, is often confused with its sound alike won't, with apostrophe, which in itself is another confusing word. Let's take this opportunity to untangle these very confusing, and confused, words, shall we? Let's start with won't, with apostrophe. Contrary to popular assumptions, won't is the contraction for will not, not for would not. The contraction for would not is simply wouldn't. Will not, or won't with the apostrophe, is used for future tense. Would is the past form of will, and would not or its contraction wouldn't is used in situations where something may have happened but did not actually happen. What you'll probably want to remember is that wouldn't is a more polite way of conveying something when compared to won't. And what about want without the apostrophe? As a noun, want means one's customary behavior in a particular situation. This is very similar to the meaning of its adjective form which is, also want and which means in the habit of doing something accustomed. Want is synonymous with accustomed or used. Drill question number 17. Select the word that is the opposite of the meaning of the underlined word. Choose the best answer available. Back in her time, Margaret Thatcher was an eminent world leader, although she was very unpopular with the United Kingdom's leftist north. The underlined word is, eminent. A. Infamous. B. Obscure. C. Unimportant. D. Imminent. E. Minor. 
The correct answer is B, obscure. Eminent is often confused with eminent because they look and sound very much alike. Some even wrongly assume that these two words are antonyms of each other. In fact they are hardly related. Eminent means about to happen, while eminent means a famous and highly respected person. Because eminent is synonymous with famous, many others immediately assume that infamous must be its antonym. Another wrong assumption. Infamous does not mean not famous, but rather it means having a reputation of the worst kind. In fact, most infamous people are famous, but in a bad way. That is, they are famously bad. Sadly, this mistaken assumption that infamous is the opposite of famous is not only made by test takers but by some test makers as well. We've seen it time and again in some tests and quizzes. So what should you do if you encounter a question asking for the opposite of famous, and infamous is one of the answer choices? If none of the other answer choices seem to be the opposite of famous then go ahead and choose infamous. This is one of those cases when even a test maker made this common mistake. But if there's another answer choice which is actually the opposite of famous, such as obscure or unknown, then you should choose that option. But we won't lie to you. By doing so you will probably have a 50 to 50 chance of getting a wrong mark for the question. This is when we tell you to stand your ground. Test makers need to stop perpetuating this mistake. Going back to our given question. This is the perfect example wherein we are asked for the opposite of famous, that is, the opposite of eminent, and both infamous and another word which is actually opposite in meaning with famous, that is, obscure, are present in the answer choices. Lucky for you, we are not one of those test makers who continue to make that infamous mistake. Drill question number 18. Select the answer that best conveys the meaning of the following idiomatic expression. The idiomatic expression is, couch potato. A. A person who likes to eat potatoes on the couch. B. A potato-shaped couch. C. A couch full of potatoes. D. A couch made of potatoes. E. A person who watches television all day long. The correct answer is E. A couch potato is a person who spends little or no time exercising and a great deal of time watching television. The term was coined by Tom E. Chino in 1976 as a pun on boob tuber, from boob tube, that is, television, and tuber, that is, potato. The term couch potato was trademarked by Robert Armstrong from 1976 to 1991. It has since found its way into day-to-day -day spoken and written English and been integrated into popular culture. Drill question number 19. Choose the word closest in meaning to the underlined word. He always speaks in a haughty tone. The underlined word is, haughty. A. Conceited. B. Low-pitched. C. Confident. D. Naughty. E. Authoritative. The correct answer is A. Conceited. Haughty has nothing to do with voice pitch so we can quickly eliminate answer choice B. Haughty and naughty may sound and look similar but their similarity ends there. We can also quickly eliminate answer choice D. Haughty people tend to speak confidently and authoritatively, but confidence and authoritativeness do not necessarily equate to haughtiness, meaning people who are confident and or authoritative are not necessarily haughty. We use haughty to describe someone's behavior or appearance when we disapprove of the fact that they seem to be very proud and that they seem to think that they are better than other people. From among the answer choices, conceited is closest in meaning to haughty. Drill question number 20. Choose the letter that corresponds to the word or phrase that means almost the same as the underlined word. The indigenous mountain people consider their burial ground sacrosanct. The underlined word is, sacrosanct. A. Old. B. Haunted. C. Cursed. D. Hallowed. E. Off limits. The correct answer is D. Hallowed. Sacrosanct places, 
principles, routines, etc. are regarded as too important or valuable to be interfered with. Sacrosanct is usually used to mean, or is mostly associated with the word, sacred. Although off-limits and barred are among its known synonyms, these are most probably not the intended meaning in the context of the given sentence. Many indigenous people allow and in fact, even welcome, tourists to visit their burial sites as long as proper decorum and respectful behavior are observed. Hallowed, on the other hand, means made holy or consecrated, as in hallowed ground. It also means greatly revered and honored, as in the band will be in playing some hallowed and historic surroundings. This is the most likely context of a given sentence. Drill question number 21. Choose the word that best completes the sentence. The skater glided across the blank. A. Field. B. Lake. C. Rink. D. Room. E. Sky. The correct answer is C. Rink. Although the verb glide can sometimes be used to describe an activity or action happening in the sky, such as in, the space shuttle glided spectacularly from the sky, it is not usually used or associated with skating. Skating is not usually done across a field or a lake, unless these are covered with ice or frozen, respectively. Skating usually requires a big enough space to move around so a room is not an appropriate place for it, unless it is a huge, sprawling room such as an auditorium or, better yet, a rink, which is specifically intended for such an activity in the first place. The correctly completed sentence should read as The skater glided across the rink. Drill question number 22. Choose the word closest in meaning to the underlined word. Reject it as hearsay. The underlined word is, hearsay. A. Gossip. B. Blatant lie. C. Fiction. D. Untrue. E. Hear and say. The correct answer is A. Gossip. Hearsay is information received from other people that one cannot adequately substantiate. It may or may not be fiction. It is not necessarily untrue or a blatant lie. In most cases hearsay is simply rumor or gossip. Drill question number 23. Choose the word which is the most opposite in meaning to the underlined word. An obstinate student. The underlined word is, obstinate. A. Contrarian. B. Disciplined. C. Honest. D. Stubborn. E. Obedient. The correct answer is E. Obedient. Stubborn and contrarian have the same or similar meaning with obstinate. We can quickly eliminate these answer choices since we are looking for the word with the most opposite meaning to obstinate. Among disciplined, honest, and obedient, obedient is the one which is most opposite in meaning with the underlined word. Drill question number 24. Choose the word or phrase that best keeps the meaning of the original sentence if it is substituted for the underlined word or phrase. The lack of law allowing divorce has kept wives and husbands ensnared in fraught relationships which often cause damage to children's psychological health. The underlined word is, fraught. A. Tight. B. Uneasy. C. Loose. D. Open. E. Horrific. The correct answer is B. Uneasy. Being ensnared means that someone is in an unwanted situation or relationship. Among the answer choices, only uneasy and horrific can describe a relationship that is not healthy. Although some husband-wife relationships can indeed be described as horrific, and although fraught looks and sounds a lot like fright, the adjective form of which, frightening, is synonymous with horrific, fraught and horrific do not mean the same thing. Fraught means filled with or likely to result in something undesirable, as well as causing or affected by anxiety or stress. Uneasy is the word that best keeps the meaning of fraud if it is to substitute the word. Drill question number 25. Bambi is good at buttering up her superiors and that's how she mostly gets promoted. To butter someone up is to A. Insult someone B. Bribe someone C. Flatter someone D. Blackmail someone 
E. Give someone a hard time. The correct answer is C. To flatter someone. To butter up someone means to flatter or excessively praise someone, usually to gain a favor. This idiomatic expression most likely originated from India. A customary religious act in ancient India included throwing butter balls at the statues of gods to seek their favor and get bestowed with good fortune. Drill question number 26. Choose the word that best completes the sentence. The polluted air made Ms. Go feel as if she were, blank. A. Euphoric. B. Revitalized. C. Flying. D. Smothering. E. Smoldering. The correct answer is D. Smothering. Polluted air will most definitely neither revitalize nor make anybody euphoric. A flying-like feeling may be possible in the context of getting dizzy from the pollution, but this is a bit of a stretch. Unless there is no better answer among the choices, flying is not likely to be the correct answer. Many people tend to confuse smothering from smoldering because they look and sound very much alike. Smoldering is the process of burning slowly with smoke, no flame. On the other hand, smothering is the gerund and past participle form of smother, which means to kill, someone, by covering their nose and mouth so that they suffocate. Between smoldering and smothering, the latter best fits the context of the given sentence. Therefore, the correctly completed sentence should read as, The polluted air made Ms. Go feel as if she were smothering. Drill question number 27. Choose the word or phrase that best keeps the meaning of the original sentence if it is substituted for the underlined word or phrase. Although scientists provide a plethora of theories explaining the nature of the physical universe, whatever lies beyond its borders remains a conundrum. The underlined word is, conundrum. A. Mystery. B. Riddle. C. Secret. D. Paradox. E. Irony. The correct answer is A. Mystery. The main clause describes the universe that cannot be fully explained. We can eliminate secret and paradox because an inexplicable thing is not necessarily a secret or a paradox. Although it is one of the possible definitions of a conundrum, riddle implies that there is already an answer which does not fit the context of the sentence. An irony is a state of affairs or an event that seems deliberately contrary to what one expects and is often amusing as a result, as in, the irony is that I thought he could help me. Irony does not fit the context of the given sentence. In this case mystery is the better answer. Drill question number 28. Select the word that is the opposite of the meaning of the highlighted word. Choose the best answer available. Van Gogh certainly wasn't a proponent of achromatic painting. The highlighted word is, achromatic. A. Colorful. B. Abstract. C. Colorless. D. Multifaceted. E. Monochrome. The correct answer is A. Colorful. Achromatic means without color. Therefore, colorless can be quickly eliminated since we are asked for the word with the opposite meaning. Monochrome means black and white which, although not exactly the same as achromatic, is very much similar to it. We should also quickly eliminate this option. Abstract is a form or genre of classical art wherein there is no attempt to represent an accurate depiction of a visual reality but instead use shapes, colors, forms, and gestural marks to achieve its effect. Multifaceted literally translates to having many facets. Multifaceted art is a technique in creating art wherein the images can have various facades when viewed from different angles. Actually, the correct answer is obviously answer choice A, colorful. If we know exactly what achromatic means then we should be able to quickly choose A without having to eliminate wrong answers first dot but it's always good to learn what the other answer choices mean, isn't it? Drill question number 29. Choose the word closest in meaning to the underlined word. His hair is unkempt, like Einstein's. A. Curly and expansive. B. Haven't been cut for a long time. C. Untied. D. Smelly. E. Disheveled. The correct answer is E. Disheveled. 
Unkempt means having an untidy or disheveled appearance, as in they were unwashed and unkempt. Unkempt hair may be smelly. Or maybe not. Untied hair is also not necessarily unkempt. Most people do not tie their hair. Not getting a haircut for a long time also do not equate to unkempt hair. Rapunzel never got a haircut for many many years but still maintained a well-groomed and very attractive hair. Drill question number 30. Choose the letter that corresponds to the word or phrase that means almost the same as the underlined word. Everyone was prohibited from interrupting the chairman's tete-a-tete -tete with the CEO. The underlined word is, tete-a-tete. -tete. A. Confrontation. B. Argument. C. Private talk. D. Pep talk. E. Press conference. The correct answer is C. Private talk. The given sentence clearly states that only the chairman and the CEO are involved so we can eliminate press conference as a possible correct answer. We do not know if they are having a confrontation, an argument, or merely a pep talk. They may or may not be having any of these. All we know is that they are having a private conversation, which is what tete-a-tete -tete means. Tete-a-tete -tete is a loan phrase from the French. Its origin can be traced back to the 17th century. Literally, it means head-to-head. -head. As used in contemporary English it can be a noun, that is, a private conversation between two people, an adjective, that is, involving or happening between two people in private, or an adverb, to describe the action between two people in private. Drill question number 31. Choose the word that best completes the sentence. Liza Makua, a famous Filipino ballet dancer and Philippines' most notable prima ballerina, is also a well-known, blank. A. Tennis player. B. Debater. C. Movie. D. Street sweeper. E. Choreographer. The correct answer is E. Choreographer. Liza Makua is a well-known personality in the Philippines, hardly anybody doesn't know her. We know her primarily for her unparalleled fame and outstanding contributions in the field of ballet dancing. She is definitely not a street sweeper so we can quickly eliminate this option. We don't know if Liza Makua plays tennis or if she is, or was, a debater. She may or may not be either or both of these. But even if she is a tennis player or a debater, we know for certain that she is not known for either of these. Liza Makua is a well-known personality not a movie. Even if there is a movie made for or inspired by her, which we know for a fact there isn't, as of the posting of this reviewer at least, it doesn't seem to be well known since we couldn't find any reference to it. On the other hand, she is most likely a well-known choreographer. Even if we do not know for a fact that Liza Makua does choreography, it is a very reasonable assumption to make since choreography is very much related to her career. The correctly completed sentence should read as Liza Makua, a famous Filipino ballet dancer, is also a well-known choreographer. Drill question number 32. Choose the word closest in meaning to the underlined word. An innocent pulchritude. The underlined word is, pulchritude. A. Look. B. Face. C. Beauty. D. Gesture. E. Intelligence. The correct answer is C. Beauty. Pulchritude is a descendant of the Latin adjective pulcher, which means beautiful. It is hardly used in everyday written and spoken English, except in literary works. For some reasons, like poets, vocabulary test makers seem to be drawn to this weird sounding word as we seem to encounter it quite a lot in vocabulary tests and quizzes. But don't go about using it to flatter a girl or you may end up getting a puzzled look at best. Drill question number 33. Choose the word which is the most opposite in meaning to the underlined word. A malleable apprentice. The underlined word is, malleable. A. Stubborn. B. Hostile. C. Open-minded. D. Obedient. E. Flexible. The correct answer is A. Stubborn. Malleable means pliable or easily influenced like in, clay is malleable but a rock is not. Open-minded, obedient, and flexible are all somewhat similar in meaning or related to malleable. Therefore, we can quickly eliminate them from the answer choices. 
Between stubborn and hostile we'll have to choose stubborn as it is the one most opposite and meaning with malleable. Drill question number 34. Choose the word or phrase that best keeps the meaning of the original sentence if it is substituted for the underlying word or phrase. Call center agents are trained not only to be efficient in their service, but most importantly to exhibit forbearance in dealing with difficult customers. The underlined word is, forbearance. A. Politeness. B. Fortitude. C. Patience. D. Self-restraint. E. Tact. The correct answer is D. Self-restraint. All of the answer choices are desirable traits for call center agents. Patience and politeness are a given. Every call center agent must have them as a minimum. Fortitude means courage, which they need a lot in dealing with difficult, often even rude clients. Tact is the ability to tell the truth in a way that considers other people's feelings and reactions, another must-have among call center agents. However, self-restraint is the only possible answer. To forbear means to restrain oneself in doing or saying something. Drill question number 35. His success aroused the green-eyed monster and his friend. In this sentence, green-eyed monster means A. Rage B. Envy C. Admiration D. Adulation E. Sexual Desire The correct answer is B. Envy. The idiomatic phrase, green-eyed monster means envy, jealousy, or covetousness. Its origin can be traced back to Shakespeare, specifically in his play, Othello. Oh, beware, my lord, of jealousy, it is the green-eyed monster which doth mock the meat it feeds on. Drill question number 36. Choose the word closest in meaning to the underlined word. The mater d' assured them that they would be served quickly. The underlined word is, mater d. A. Waitress. B. Matriarch. C. Grandmother. D. Concierge. E. Head Waitress. The correct answer is E. Head Waitress. Mater d is short for Mater d'hotel, which comes from French and literally means master of the house. Mater d'hotel was used in English for a head butler or steward of a household before it referred to the head of a dining room staff. For the record, the plural of mater d'hotel is maître d'hotel whereas the plural of mater d' is mater d's. A concierge on the other hand, is another loan word from the French which means caretaker of an apartment complex or a small hotel, typically one living on the premises. In some instances the concierge may be the same as the mater d', but more often not. A concierge can be a standalone position or one who reports to a supervisor or manager, possibly the mater d'. In contrast, the mater d' always has supervisory function and responsibility. Drill question number 37. Connoisseur is to masterpiece, in the same manner that a. Space is to spherical. B. Comet is to planetary. C. Vapor is to solid. D. Gourmet is to delicacy. E. Fossils is to archaeologist. The correct answer is D. A connoisseur is an expert, especially one who understands the details, technique, or principles of an art and is competent to act as a critical judge. The term is often used in relation to art, although it can also be used to refer to experts in other areas such as music, food, fashion, and so on. For our given word analogy, the relationship we are looking for is, expert is to area of expertise. Among the answer choices, only gourmet is to delicacy matches this relationship. A gourmet is also a connoisseur, but specifically in relation to good food. Fossils is to archaeologists could have satisfied the relationship but their order is reversed. Drill question number 38. Choose the word or phrase that best fits the meaning of the underlined word. My friends invited two drag queens to roast me on my birthday party. It was the most fun that I had in a long time. The underlined word is, roast. 
A. To tickle. B. To be the subject of jokes. C. To heat excessively. D. To humiliate. E. To expose. The correct answer is B. To be the subject of jokes. To be roasted is a slang expression which means to be subjected to the taunts, criticism, ridicule and banter of someone or some group of people, especially for comedic effect. Although roasting can potentially humiliate the target, and it usually does, its primary objective is to entertain rather than to humiliate. Drill question number 39. Choose the word closest in meaning to the underlined word. Vindicated from the case. The underlined word is, vindicated. A. Accepted. B. Acquitted. C. Convicted. D. Condemned. E. Avenged. The correct answer is B. Acquitted. A vindicated person is someone who is cleared of blame or suspicion. In the context of the given phrase, being vindicated from a case, presumably in a legal proceeding, means that a person is acquitted of the charges filed against him or her. Drill question number 40. Choose the letter that corresponds to the word or phrase that means almost the same as the underlined word. Do not attempt to cook the meat unless it is completely thawed. The underlined word is, thawed. A. Tenderized. B. Frozen. C. Drained. D. Dried. E. Defrosted. The correct answer is E. Defrosted. Most frozen foods need to be thawed, or defrosted, before cooking. In temperate countries where there's snow, thawing usually refers to the process of snow turning into ice, and later of ice turning into water. Drill question number 41. Choose the word that best completes the sentence. The cars were parked along the blank that bordered the park. A. Curb. B. Cul-de-sac. C. Guard house. D. Stage. E. Hydrant. The correct answer is A. Curb. A hydrant is a fixture in a street or other public places from which firefighters tap into as an emergency source of water. In most places it is illegal to park a vehicle in front of a hydrant. We can quickly eliminate this option. A stage and a guardhouse are both structures in front or along which one to a few cars may be parked. But neither can be described to border a park. A cul-de-sac is a street or passage that is closed at one end. Although several cars can possibly be parked along it, it is also something that cannot be described to border a park. A curb on the other hand, is a stone or concrete edging to a street or path. Curbs are mostly used as sidewalks but oftentimes also for parking. The correctly completed sentence should read as The cars were parked along the curb that bordered the park. Take note however, that the term curb is used chiefly in North America and by extension the Philippines, but hardly anywhere else. In most other countries it is simply referred to as pavement or sidewalk. Drill question number 42. Choose the word closest in meaning to the underlined word. A disdainful colleague. The underlined word is, disdainful. A. Arrogant. B. Unkempt. C. Foolish. D. Respectful. E. Poorly groomed. The correct answer is A. Arrogant. Poorly groomed is synonymous with unkempt, but not with disdainful. So we can quickly eliminate these two. Respectful is actually the opposite of disdainful so we can also eliminate it. Disdainful means showing contempt or lack of respect. It is synonymous with arrogant, scornful, and contemptuous. Drill question number 43. Choose the word which is the most opposite in meaning to the underlined word. A partisan official. The underlined word is, partisan. A. Biased. B. Adroit. C. Partyless. D. Partial. E. Biased. The correct answer is E. Unbiased. Partisan means prejudiced in favor of a particular cause, belief, or group. 
Biased and partial are both synonymous with partisan so we can eliminate them from the choices. If biased is a synonym of partisan then unbiased must be its opposite. Drill question number 44. Choose the word or phrase that best keeps the meaning of the original sentence if it is substituted for the underlined word or phrase. The torture methods used by the rogue policeman, dry submarine, water cure, Russian roulette, and so on, were so egregious that it is almost impossible to imagine anyone who went through them to have survived. The underlined word is, egregious. A. Malicious. B. Gregarious. C. Uninspiring. D. Precise. E. Appalling. The correct answer is E. Appalling. Torture is not meant to inspire so yes, in that sense, any and all torture methods are uninspiring. But that is not what the sentence is trying to say so we can quickly eliminate answer choice C. Extracting information and or inflicting fear and terror are often the objective of torture, not casting malice, so we can also eliminate malicious as an option. Precision is not something usually associated with torture, except perhaps to describe the way the torture methods are performed. It should be safe to remove precise as a possible answer. Take note that egregious is often confused with gregarious, but except for sounding and looking similar they are not related at all. Gregarious means very sociable, while egregious means shockingly or outstandingly bad. We are left with appalling which is actually synonymous with egregious and perfectly fits the context of the given sentence. Drill question number 45. The surprise guest performer kept us in stitches for nearly an hour. The phrase in stitches in the sentence means A. Laughing uncontrollably B. Sobbing uncontrollably C. Bored to death D. Confused E. Insulted The correct answer is A. Laughing uncontrollably The idiomatic phrase, in stitches, means laughing uncontrollably, or laughing loud and hard, for a period of time. We can thank Shakespeare for this expression. Presumably comparing the physical pain of intense laughter with the prick of a needle in stitches was first used in 1602 by Shakespeare in Twelfth Night. Drill question number 46. Choose the word closest in meaning to the underlined word. Many otaku retreat to their rooms to live life online, never leaving the parental nest. The underlined word is, otaku. A. Geek. B. Gamer. C. Teenager. D. Loner. E. Unmarried and unemployed middle-aged person. The correct answer is A. Geek. Otaku is a loan word from the Japanese. It is usually used to refer to a young person who is obsessed with computers or particular aspects of popular culture to the detriment of their social skills. In Japan, the word otaku can be most closely equated to the English word geek or nerd, but the meaning is not as simple as that. Otaku is also defined in Japan as a word that defines a person who has obsessive interests and can apply to a wide variety of topics, including anime, manga, cosplay, collectibles, and more. Going back to the question, all of the given answer choices are somewhat descriptions of an otaku, except middle-aged person since an otaku is generally and usually a young person. So he or she can be but not necessarily a teenager, a gamer, a manga follower, an anime fan, a cosplayer, and so on. He or she is probably but not necessarily, a loner, unmarried, and unemployed. Among the choices, geek is the closest and most encompassing description of an otaku. Drill question number 47. Fleece is to sheep, in the same manner that a. Complicate is to tangle. B. Billy is to goat. C. Lengthen is to dimension. D. Calf is to cow. E. Plumage is to bird. The correct answer is E. The second word in the first pair of our word analogy is sheep, which means that the relationship we are looking for is about or related to animals. Therefore we can quickly eliminate answer choices A and C since they do not involve any animal. Of the three answer choices that involve animals. Billy is a male goat. A calf is a young cow, or whale, or elephant, or hippopotamus, and so on. A plumage is the collective term for a bird's feathers. 
So which of these three matches the given relationship in our word analogy? Fleece is the woolly covering of a sheep or goat. Therefore, we are looking for an animal's covering and the name of the animal who has it. Among the answer choices the only pair that matches this relationship is E, plumage is to bird. Drill question number 48. Choose the word or phrase that best fit the meaning of the underlined word. While transgenderism is deemed a form of sexual aberration in Christian culture, the indigenous Tedu Rai people of Mindanao believe that those who are born male can be a woman. The underlined word is, aberration. A. Conformity. B. Change. C. Evolution. D. Revolution. E. Deviation. The correct answer is E. Deviation. The signal word while indicates that the idea of transgenderism is not normative in Christian culture, unlike in the culture of the Tedu Rai people. Among the answer choices, only deviation fits the context of the sentence. Drill question number 49. Choose the word closest in meaning to the underlined word. He wanders off looking a little pensive. The underlined word is, pensive. A. Sad. B. Defensive. C. Defeated. D. Disappointed. E. Not expensive. The correct answer is A. Sad. Pensive means deeply or seriously thoughtful, often with a tinge of sadness. Although pensive does not always mean sad, it is often used in this context. Therefore, among the answer choices sad is the one with the closest meaning to the underlined word. Drill question number 50. Choose the word or phrase that best keeps the meaning of the original sentence if it is substituted for the underlined word or phrase. Vandalism is an act of breaking or defacement of public properties and thus entails legal consequences such as imprisonment. At the same time, it can be a brazen and effective expression of dissatisfaction and frustration with the system of society. The underlined word is, brazen. A. Ignorant. B. Strong. C. Efficient. D. Inefficient. E. Bold. The correct answer is E. Bold. The transition at the same time signals that there are two opposite conditions simultaneously happening. Since the first clause is negatively charged, then the second clause must be positively charged. Therefore, we can eliminate ignorant and inefficient since these are negatively charged adjectives. Among strong, efficient, and bold, we have to settle with bold since the context talks about courage, not strength or efficiency. By the way, take note that although brazen is often used in a derogatory context, that is, shameless, it is not the case in the way it was used in the given sentence. In the context of the given sentence, brazen takes on the meaning unapologetic instead of shameless. You have just watched episode 3 of Review Central's English Language Proficiency Reviewer Drills, featuring drill questions on English vocabulary. By now you should be ready to take on any exam featuring English vocabulary. The drill questions we featured in this particular episode have been carefully curated to present to you as many of the typical vocabulary questions that appear on exams. If you wish to watch more English language proficiency reviewer drills, check out our English language proficiency reviewer drills playlist. Check out also our other reviewer drill playlists for other topics. If you haven't done so yet, please don't forget to subscribe to Review Central and click or press the bell button to make sure you get notified whenever we post a new reviewer or other review materials on this channel. Please like if you find this video useful and feel free to share to anyone who may also benefit from it. We wish you all the best on your forthcoming exam.